Hey, it's Steven from TripOfLifestyle.com and I want to talk to you a little bit about how to get health insurance in the United States if you don't have a full-time job. So Lauren and I run a website that tells people, hey, you should work part-time instead of full-time, or hey, you should take six months off of work and go on a crazy sabbatical or vacation, or hey, you should retire early when you're 30 or 40 years old. And we kind of get the same feedback every single time, which is, well, what do you do about health insurance? But the thing here is, it doesn't just affect early retirees or people who are on sabbaticals or people who work part-time. There's millions of people out there who are small business owners. And honestly, they deal with the exact same problem, right? If you run your own business, you have to provide your own health insurance for yourself. There's no employer to do it for you. So what do they do? Some of the answers are the same. Some of the answers are a little bit different. But the point is, it's totally doable. You can do it. So the two main options I really want to focus on are the ones that I'm the most familiar with, which is basically getting a healthcare plan through healthcare.gov, an ACA compliant healthcare plan. And there's really two ways that that can happen for you. Either you're going to qualify for a subsidy, which is great, which means it's actually gonna be pretty inexpensive for you. Or in a lot of cases, you won't qualify for a subsidy, you'll just have to pay full price, in which case I personally recommend getting a high deductible health plan. So the first option sounds a lot more attractive, right? It's supposed to be cheaper, so let's try that first. So you're gonna to go to healthcare.gov, you type in all your income information, and it turns out that if your income, if your household income is between 100% and 400% of the federal poverty line, um, that's as of 2021, then you're gonna qualify for subsidized health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. So that means that you're just gonna buy health insurance but the government's gonna kick in some money in the form of a tax credit to help you pay for it. Now, a lot of people who are following the FIRE path, the early retirement path, are actually gonna qualify for one of these ACA subsidies. If you're not working much anymore and most of your income comes from investments and you're living a pretty frugal life, then you're pretty likely to come in between that 100 and 400% of the federal poverty line in terms of income. So while you can have a lot of assets, you may still actually qualify for an ACA subsidy based on income, which is kind of weird, but it's true. So personally, Lauren and I are retired early, so we don't really have any plans to go back to a full-time job that would provide us with health insurance anytime in the foreseeable future. So we have to provide for it for ourselves, and we actually don't qualify for that subsidy. And the reason for that is we've kept a little bit of freelance income, which is nice to have, a little extra money, that combined with our investment income actually puts us over that 400% of federal poverty line. So we don't qualify for any subsidy at all. We're stuck paying full price. So if you're gonna pay full price, you still go ahead and sign up for a plan at healthcare.gov. You're just not gonna get any of that government assistance with it. And because you're paying for it out of pocket yourself, you're probably gonna to wanna to pick one with a relatively high deductible. So if you pick a high deductible, uh, you're responsible for a little bit more if something bad happens, but in exchange for that, you get a lower premium, a lower monthly payment. Uh, but what we are able to do, because we pick one of these high deductible plans, is we were able to strategically pick one that made us HSA eligible. And HSA is a health savings account, and they only pair up with high deductible health plans. So the idea behind the HSA is, you put money in tax-free, um, so you get a tax break for contributing to this savings account. You invest that money inside the HSA account. Um, I really like uh, the HSA that Fidelity offers. And so you invest the money inside the account and it grows over time. As long as you use that money on healthcare-related expenses at some point during your life, then that money also comes out completely tax-free. So it goes in tax-free, it comes out tax-free, it's a huge tax benefit. And just for reference, how much does this cost to pay full price for your health care out of pocket? Uh, in 2021, when I'm recording this video, we personally pay just a little bit over $500 a month for two people, and that's actually for the highest deductible plan available. So our deductible is $6,900 per year per person, so our worst case scenario, let's say something bad happened to both of us at the same time, we would both have to pay $6,900 out of pocket before the health insurance would kick in and cover anything. So a lot of people would call that a really bad healthcare plan because uh, it doesn't cover anything for the first $6,900 per person. But remember, in exchange for taking on that risk ourselves, 
we get a much lower premium. If you try to have a much lower deductible, you're gonna pay a way higher premium. So we're relatively healthy and we don't expect anything bad to happen. So we're willing to take that risk. The other thing is, if you're gonna take that risk, if you're gonna have a high deductible plan, you need to have plenty of money in the bank to pay that deductible if necessary. I would recommend having many times the deductible in the savings. So if you're early retired, you probably automatically qualify for that. I'm sure you have uh, many times your deductible in savings already. If you're not retiring early, if you're like taking a sabbatical or if you're just a part-time worker or something like that, it's something to consider. Can you bear the risk of paying that full deductible if something bad were to happen to you? One silver lining of the high deductible health plan is that it kind of incentivizes you to take care of yourself because you know that if something bad happens, you're on the hook for thousands of dollars of medical expenses each year. You don't have insurance to cover it. So it's gonna incentivize you to eat better and exercise more and take care of yourself. So think about that. Now, like I said before, the main ways that early retirees or part-time workers or small business owners or people on sabbatical get their health insurance is to just go ahead and buy an ACA compliant plan on healthcare.gov and either get a subsidy or just pay full price for it, right? But there are actually lots of alternatives out there. Um, so I'm gonna go over some of those, even though I haven't done these personally, uh, I think they're still worth mentioning. So the first alternative option is to self-insure. Now this would probably only apply to an early retiree because self-insuring health insurance is actually really risky. Remember, really bad stuff can happen and you pretty much have to pay for it because um, you may be put in a situation where like, let's say you get cancer or something like that, right? You're not gonna not pay for it. You're not gonna not take the care because that would result in some very bad things. So you're kind of forced to pay for it. And if you're self-insuring, you have no insurance whatsoever, that's all out of pocket for you. So this is an option you would only wanna consider if you are very wealthy, okay? So if you feel like you have so many millions of dollars that no matter what bad health outcome happens to you, you can cover it out of pocket. If that's the case for you, cool. Maybe it's possible that you could go without health insurance and actually be okay. You're taking on all the risk yourself, but you don't have to pay any premiums to a health insurance company. If you do that, there's these doctors out there called direct primary care doctors who will actually take care of you for your regular visits and stuff and you just pay them out of pocket or you sometimes pay them like a monthly or annual fee for whatever basic visits you need. So, you know, just Google direct primary care doctors. That may be something you would consider if you're gonna self-insure your health insurance. But honestly, that doesn't apply to very many people. Another option out there are these health share programs. A lot of them are called health share ministries because a ton of them are like religiously affiliated and they're kind of a health reimbursement program is sort of the way to think about it. Like if something bad happens to you, you kind of have to pay out of pocket for it or receive the bill for it and then submit your bills to your health share program for a reimbursement for uh, whatever happened to you. So these aren't as well regulated as like the ACA compliant proper health insurance plans. So you really wanna do your homework on how legit the one that you're signing up for is. I personally don't have a lot of experience with these, so I can't say a lot about them, but some people have really good things to say. Another thing that I've heard of people doing, especially people who take sabbaticals, who take like six months or a year off and go travel, is buying travel health insurance and just dropping your insurance back home and using the travel health insurance instead. A lot of times that comes with like medivac insurance with it where they'll fly you back to the United States in the case of like a huge emergency or something like that. But uh, you might compare the cost of getting travel insurance if you're gonna be abroad versus doing a more traditional approach. If you live in a state with an expanded Medicaid program and you have a very low household income, it's possible that you may actually qualify for that expanded Medicaid program and get completely free health coverage. Lastly, don't forget, if you're age 26 or lower, you may just qualify to be on your parents' insurance plan still. So if your parents have health insurance, you can kind of just leech off that for a little while until you turn 26. Also, if you have a spouse who has health insurance of their own, obviously you want to look at can you qualify for getting on their plan, thereby not needing a plan of your own. Now, obviously I didn't cover all those in complete detail, but the bottom line here, the point I'm trying to get across to you is, don't let health insurance trap you at a full-time job for the rest of your life, all right? There is a way out of that. 
even if the worst case scenario occurs, which pretty much is the one that we're taking personally, which is just budget it in. Go ahead and pay full price for health insurance out of pocket. That's okay. You don't have to have an employer to provide you with health insurance. So don't let that be the reason why you say, I can't retire early or I can't take a travel sabbatical or I can't work part-time instead of full-time. It is possible. You can do it. So if you want some more info on all that stuff, sabbaticals, early retirement, all that, check out our blog at tripofalifestyle.com. It's all free information and don't forget to subscribe.